Hi poultry fans, Morgan here from 3000 Acres. Tonight we're talking about Backyard Poultry 101, the tips and tricks to understand whether or not getting some feathered friends for your backyard might work. We're doing this video as part of hashtag Darebin Backyard Harvest. Don't forget to share all of your gardening adventures with us using that hashtag. And if you're a Darebin resident, you can actually get a copy of Retro Suburbia if you are successful in winning our big prize. So as I said, tonight we're talking about backyard poultry, uh, and that could mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but this is in celebration of International Respect for Chickens Month, which has to be one of the funnest months on the calendar, so check that one out in a bit more detail. But to give you a sense of what I wanted to talk about, I think a lot of people jump into getting chooks or other backyard poultry without having a realistic sense of how much work that might be. And while I am a huge advocate of adding some feathered friends to the backyard, there is some stuff to be aware of and to plan for in advance that can make your life a lot happier when they show up. So the first thing I wanted to acknowledge is that, of course, backyard poultry works in urban areas. Some people think of chooks as really a country thing, but there are a lot of chooks in backyards all around Melbourne and they can be enormously successful, as can other types of poultry. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Keep in mind though, there are often council regulations. So with chooks in particular, for example, there can be a limit on the number of hens you can have before needing to apply for a permit. And usually there is a restriction in urban areas on whether or not you can have a rooster, for obvious reasons, uh, not only in terms of your neighbor's sanity. But one of the reasons that I really love talking about backyard poultry and, and a reason why I would never wanna have a long-term garden without them is because they help in closing the loop. For a long time, I felt like my garden was missing a piece. I had the bees that were helping me pollinate. I was growing things for the soil. I was growing things for uh, myself to eat, but I was missing that chunk in, or that part of the loop where I had someone who was processing waste for me and providing a resource back in exchange. In particular, I found that I was often buying fertilizers for my garden. Whereas when you have your own backyard chooks or quails or whatever else, of course you're able to produce those nutrients right in your own space using something that would have been waste material before. As we keep chatting, don't forget to post any comments or questions that you have below. I'd love to know where you're watching from, if you already have chooks or quails, or if there's anything you wanna know before you go and make that purchase for yourself. So as I said, a great reason to have the feathered friends is not only so that they produce delicious eggs for you and that you understand the, the ethical ways in which they've been raised, but also because they are really, really helpful at recycling nutrients into your garden. That said, if you're someone who only wants to get chooks because you want your own eggs at home, I have to say that there are cheaper and less time intensive ways of getting ethical eggs. So keep that in mind as we talk about the 101 behind getting some feathered friends. So there are lots of choices in terms of different types of poultry that people keep. That extends to ducks, to geese, to guinea fowls. Um, one of my neighbors has a peacock. But for the most part in urban areas, the two easiest choices are chooks and quails. I know some people do keep ducks in urban areas, but there are some extra considerations with them. So I, I recommend that you look that up in a bit more detail. Tonight, let's just talk about chooks and quails. So starting off with the basic, the obvious, the backyard chook that everybody loves. So as I said before, make sure you check your council regulations about the number of chooks that you can have in your area. From most of the councils I've looked at, normally the limit is about five or six before you have to apply for a permit. On top of that, what I want you to be aware of in planning for chooks is that you have setup costs. That is the costs of building a safe home for them to live in, fox proofing it. But then there are also ongoing costs, not just the maintenance to their area, but as, as well as food. Because while chooks can absolutely eat scraps from your kitchen, that can't be all they eat. They will also need to be supplemented with some grain, with some pellets that you're buying on a regular basis. So keep in mind that we will have some ongoing costs. Another thing to be aware of is even if you don't have a rooster, hens make some noise. Laying an egg is a big deal and sometimes they want everybody to know about it. So if you have a really tight backyard with neighbors close on either side, keep that in mind. Supposedly there are some breeds of chooks that are quieter than others and I have seen that play out but I've also had some surprisingly noisy hens from breeds that I didn't expect. So if you have really tight in neighbors, perhaps quails might be a better option for you. Something to consider. Something else to think about is that if you get chooks, you do need to be home. That is that a healthy chook is one that has someone looking in on it, ideally daily. 
If you are someone who isn't going to be able to look at your chooks on a daily basis, then you need to have some preparation in advance to make sure that you're going to be able to keep them nice and healthy, like an automatic watering system and a backup bowl, um, like multiple food stations. So keep that in mind if you go away quite a lot, or make sure you have a neighbor who you can ask to help you out. Another thing to keep in mind in these urban areas is we have foxes. I've seen a lot of them. I used to live in Northcote and more than once spotted a fox in a very, very urban area. They're absolutely around. They can get into your backyard and they will eat your chooks. Foxes are incredible predators. They can dig, they can climb. And so if you think that that might be a risk in your backyard, make sure that you're thinking about a fox proof uh, enclosure for your chooks. The last thing I want to add to my list of considerations before you decide to get chooks is they might surprise you in how long lived they are. There are varieties of chooks that only live for about three to five years. And I've known chooks who have lived past 15. So if that's something that's going to distress you, if you're not going to be able to commit to a long period of time, make sure that you have a backup plan. Luckily, there are a lot of rehoming sites online, but it's just the worst case scenario if your chook stops laying uh, at about 12 or something like that, and then you feel too guilty to get rid of them. So just have a bit of a plan of how is your family going to deal with a very long lived chook if you don't want to have one around for 15 years. So with all that in mind, when you go to set up for chooks, the first thing you're going to need is a coop. And the coop I'm going to show you here is from a great book that luckily I got from the library before COVID called The Contented Chook. So this book's full of inspiration that Gardening Australia have seen over the years of great coops around Australia. And one that they show early on is the classic kind of post-war coop that you can see here. And while it basically looks like a shed that's been converted, and in fact at my house that's exactly what we're doing, is converting a shed that's too small to be my gardening shed into a chicken coop. That can work really well. And these kind of classic post-war coops were actually pretty well designed. You can see that the person there is able to access eggs without going into the coop. It's a big, nice space for the chooks to stay toasty in winter, but also cool in summer. And it's got good airflow and ventilation, which is kind of key for chook health. So with your coop, basically what you're thinking about is the amount of space you need for the size of the chooks, whether they're bantams or full size, and the number that you have. Keeping in mind that you might say now you're only getting three, but that number will increase, I guarantee. <laughs> as well as the weather, making sure that it's um, going to keep the elements out, but also allow for it to be quite breathable in our house. Feeding and watering stations, as well as the food that you're gonna be giving them on a regular basis. As I mentioned before, not just table scraps, you're gonna need pellets as well, and great if they can have daily access to fresh greens. On top of that, you're gonna need a roaming area and decide on a mulch that's going to work for your chooks, because you will be really surprised how quickly they can turn some grass into the psalm. On top of that, you might need a separation space for introducing new chooks and a first aid area, but those are longer term considerations. Okay, it looks like we're having a few wireless issues, so let me know if you're having any trouble seeing me, but it seems like we're corrected for now. So on top of that, something I wanted to quickly mention was how to choose a chook, and I see someone talking about different breeds in the comments, so do keep the questions coming. Now, a lot of people, when they think of a backyard chook, go to the classic an Isa Brown. So these guys are egg laying machines. So these little ladies can lay, I've heard of cases of them laying an egg a day for pretty much their whole lives, but generally you would expect 300 plus eggs a year. They are a crossbreed that was specifically bred in France for good egg laying tendencies. And Isa Browns can be beautiful and really lovely chooks. Keep in mind that they are much shorter lived than most varieties of chooks, usually about three to five years for Isa Browns versus, as I said before, closer to 12, 15 for other chooks. So for example, you might wanna go outside that norm of the Isa Browns, which are probably the eggs that you're already buying at the supermarket with something like an Ericana. I love these beautiful chooks and they lay Easter blue eggs, which are gorgeous and a lot of fun for kids. You might be looking for something more like, uh, I've marked myself out here, silkies. So gorgeous. So silkies are an absolutely, absolute favorite for people with kids. I find that they're really, really cute little breeds. And someone asked before for a quieter hen variety. I've heard it said that silkies can be quite quiet and they are quite small for a backyard setup. So that can work really, really well. Lovely temperaments as well. My favorite, I have to say, is the Wyandotte. 
I absolutely love those little scallop feathers. I can't go past them. They are a beautiful, beautiful chook and they lay really lovely eggs. There's a huge variety of chooks out there and it's actually one of the reasons that I really recommend this book. They talk about about, um, I would say 50 different varieties and the, the relative merits of each. So check that one out. But there is also a great site that I'll post into the comments here of choosing your chook because the things I want you to take into consideration with cho choosing your chook is eggs. How many eggs do you want to get a year and do you mind their size or color? You could get light blue, you could get dark chocolate. That might be a big thing if you have kids. You're going to think about their temperament. Are they chooks that are really tolerant of being handled a lot by humans? Keeping in mind that that has as much to do with the breed as it does to how the chook was raised. On top of that, you might need to consider things like flightiness. In my garden, I don't want to fence right over the top for a variety of reasons, so I'm looking for chooks that actually can't clear my fence. That rules some out because some are exceptional flyers. You might also want to consider the size of the chook. There are smaller varieties and larger varieties, so it's worth considering if you have a smaller space or if, for example, you have smaller kids. Something else is their longevity. As we've talked about, there are different lifespans for different varieties. And also the Instagram ability. There are some chooks that are real favorites online, so like Peak and Bantams, uh, Silkies, Frizzles can make fantastic Instagrammable chooks. On top of that, you might be considering the price. Of course, you can get uh, X battery layers for, I've seen them for as little as $12, even less. But then some of these more rare varieties might put you back a little bit more. So something to consider if you're going for an economical solution or an economical solution. Some other suggestions for resources with chooks. I actually really enjoy this book, despite it being a four dummies book, which I wouldn't normally go for, but it's a very comprehensive guide on building chicken coops. The four dummies series also produces a good one on chicken health, surprisingly, it's written by an expert. But if you're thinking about designing your coop, I recommend checking this one out at the library, which I know are going to reopen soon. Um, they can be really, really helpful for designing up that space. I also can't go past this classic by Jackie French, The Chook Book. She writes a really no-nonsense guide to keeping uh, chooks in your backyard about what you can and can't feed them. That's a really long discussion, um, and I recommend this one for making a good comprehensive list in your mind for what works for feeding the chooks and what doesn't. But I want to talk a little bit about quails now. So the main question people ask are, how do quails compare to chooks? Now, I've um, had quails in the past, and I think that they are a fantastic backyard layer to have. Not only do they produce resources for you just like chooks in the form of eggs and the manure that they produce, um, but they're actually a really good small space solution. They don't require a lot of space and they are dead quiet. We had quails in my rental property uh, in Northcote for quite a while and I guarantee the neighbors had no idea because you would never hear them. Not even uh, a quail rooster makes a very small call but you would, it would be really hard pressed to hear them from a, a house next door. So the things about quails are that they are a quieter bird, they're much smaller, and when we're talking about a quail that you would keep in a backyard setting so that it lays eggs, we're talking about the Japanese quail variety. There are whole big varieties, but Japanese quails can be kept in a little flock and actually are great egg layers. So generally you would expect them to, each uh, quail hen, depending on a number of factors, to lay about four, five eggs a week, depending on um, a number of factors, as I said. And those eggs, four of those is equivalent to one standard chook egg. So while you need more of them, you can fit more quails into your space as well. Something to keep in mind with quails though, is that they're really bad flyers, but they can cover a big distance. So if they get startled, they can fly up to three meters in the air, that can clear your average backyard fence, and they can't really control their descent. So you need to have a cover on top of wherever you're keeping them to stop them from escaping over the fences. That said, you need a smaller space as well and that there are a lot of different uh, cages that work quite well, including some that are quite low to the ground. So I was able to rig up a solution for not too much money at all. They have a much shorter lifespan than chooks. They only live for about three years on average. But as I said, I think that they are a fantastic backyard solution, including for renters, including for people in small spaces, and chooks and quails alike, if you're willing to build a deep litter system, can be kept even if you don't have a great deal of access to, for example, a beautiful great big lawn or anything like that. So the question I want you to ask yourself from here is about the time and the cost of keeping backyard chooks or quails, whether that's something that you're willing to commit to. If so, 
plan your site and plan what birds you're going to get. I actually think that doing a little bit of extra reading and um, kind of backyard, uh, background research is enormously helpful at reducing the amount of work you do when you get the actual birds. I can say from experience, when I first got quails and I was so nervous about their health, it was really keeping me awake at night of, oh gosh, have I done something wrong? The more prepared you are, the less stressed out you'll be. Uh, so I'm getting some great questions through here. Thank you for those of you who are commenting. Natalie's asked, where do you source quails from? Great question. So quails are a lot more rare than chooks, of course. Uh, chooks, there are a lot of different breeders you can get them from. You can get X battery layers. I actually sourced my quails through uh, a friend of Cat Lavers, who I have to say has to be responsible for a great deal of the backyard quails around Melbourne. She's a fantastic setup that I encourage you to have a look at. We often post videos of her backyard onto our channel, um, but you can also look it up just by looking up Cat Lavers. She has a website and she writes all about her quails. So through her, I met a breeder named Peter, but I'll post some comments uh, as I go through just about where you could also source quails. My big recommendation there is only buy quails from someone who's raising them in the same way that you would in terms of ethical considerations about how they would be raised. I see a lot of quails in tiny little uh, wire cages that is just not good for their health or their happiness. So make sure that you're looking out for that one. In terms of where to go from here, there are a lot of really great resources, particularly about chooks. Gardening Australia did a segment recently that we posted on choosing the right chook variety for you. So I recommend watching that one. It's got some great tips for choosing the right chook. As I said before, there's some great books out there. The one that I don't have a copy of that I highly recommend having a look at is by Harvey Yusey, and it's called The Small Scale Poultry Flock. I think that he has some really great, very easy to follow uh, solutions for just increasing the longevity and the health of your birds. So look out for that one. As I said before, if you're really interested in, in quails, and I do recommend checking them out, um, it, it's not as much trouble as you think it would be for, to have all those little tiny eggs, check out Cat Labor Setup. I will comment below with where you can see her recommendations on ethical quail keeping as well. Other than that, my big recommendation that you get onto before you get your chooks or your quails is there are a number of Facebook groups like Coop Inspiration Australia, Backyard Chooks, Backyard Quails. People on there are posting questions all the time. I have this problem, how should I address it? And you've just got a team of semi-experts on there who are willing to, to help you work through it. I highly recommend those sites because um, the biggest thing I think when you first get chooks is you spend every minute thinking you've done something wrong and that they're unwell. So having just a sounding board of people to ask that question to is very, very helpful. Just like with everything else, I'll post in the comments in a second how to get through to those links and please do join those sites. I think they're really helpful. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this video, this is part of hashtag Darebin Backyard Harvest. So we would love for you to share your gardening adventures, your chook adventures, your quail adventures using that hashtag. And there's gonna be one lucky winner who wins a copy of Retro Suburbia, who's a Darebin resident. So please do uh, check that out. Look at the hashtag and everything that's being shared as well as share your own content. And please keep the questions coming about chooks and quails. I'll be posting answers over the next week. So keep them coming. And don't forget that next week in celebration of World Bee Day, we're gonna be talking about backyard bees, including a little tour of some of my hives just below here. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.